And Monday marks the start of National Mental Health Awareness Month and in a new initiative, Speak Up for Kids, well-known actors, athletes, and politicians are opening up about the personal struggles they themselves have faced and their triumphs. I have obsessive compulsive disorder and a generalized anxiety disorder. I have ADHD. I have depression. I had a teacher tell me that I would never amount to anything and I would never be successful. And Michael Phelps is going to win gold! When I was a kid, this was the cure for dyslexia. Hey, smarten up. Hey, smarten up. Hey, smarten up. It feels like it's never gonna end, and it does. What I would tell my younger self about having anxiety is that as I've gotten older, I've learned how to manage it with so many tools that have led to me living a pretty normal and exciting and vibrant life. I would tell my younger self to squeeze my dog tightly and to read a book and to meditate and to breathe and to understand that I'm not alone. Sometimes you feel so dark and you isolate, and you question yourself, and you think, what did I do to feel like this? It's a chemical imbalance. Having that anxiety might be indicative of other kind of, uh, you know, beneficial, positive characteristics. The one great thing about being dyslexic is you tend to focus like a laser beam. When we find something we can do well, we go right there, and we become successful. I'm an actor, I'm a comedian, I'm a judge and I got a lot of mental health issues. But since I spoke out about it, I've gotten a lot of coping skills and I'm doing pretty well. Don't be quiet. Tell people. Talk to your mother. Talk to, talk to a teacher, talk to your best friend. Once I found that it was okay to talk to somebody and, and, and seek help, that has changed my life forever and, and now I'm able to live life to its fullest. Dr. Harold Koplowitz is a leading child and adolescent psychiatrist, also the founding president of the Child Mind Institute. Doctor, it's good to see you. When you look at these numbers, it's really astounding. I think you found that 17 million children in our country have a mental health disorder. I mean, what are we talking about? What kinds of disorders? So we're talking about the fact that these are the most common illnesses of childhood and adolescence. That means everyone watching knows and loves one of these children, because if it's not your son or daughter, it's your niece or nephew, or it's your neighbor's kid. That means it's either autism autism, ADHD, uh, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, in fact, 75% of all psychiatric illness occurs before the age of 24 and 50% before 14. So that means that's when you're supposed to identify it and treat it because if I have a symptom for 10 years, much harder to treat than a symptom that's six months old. But back to these numbers, I mean, is it that the incidence of these disorders is increased or are we just more aware of them? Is there something about how we're raising kids right now? No, I think we're just getting better at identification and we're starting to do more science. In fact, the more science we do, the more we recognize that it's really about the brain not about your parenting. So, you know, you can get angry that your parents gave you bad genes, but it's not the way your mother worked or didn't work or your father and mother got divorced. It's the fact that certain kids are more vulnerable than others. Let's talk about something in the news. This series, 13 Reasons Why, a lot of young teens are watching it. It's premised on a teen's suicide. And I know you have really strong feelings about whether young teenagers should be watching this at all. Well, I think the important concept that we should remember is that 90% of all the teenagers who commit suicide have a psychiatric disorder. And that's 5,000 teenagers this year, and 600,000, one every two and a half minutes, will make an attempt that leads to the emergency room. That means that this show should be pulled off the air immediately. Hmm. Teenage suicide is contagious. We know for over three decades that when kids watch television where they depict a suicide, they're more likely to attempt and they're more likely to actually suicide. The problem with 13 Reasons is that it shows you that when you're in trouble as a teenager, there is no help. You're hopeless. And that suicide is glamorous and effective. That's not the message we want them to have. We want the message that my younger self gives, that these are prominent people who say, when I spoke up, when I got help, 
I could really have a great life. Yeah, and hopefully the celebrities who talk about it will help to erase the stigma. Doctor, thank you so much. It's good, good to have good, you here. Good Appreciate good. it. If you would like more information on childhood mental health, just go to today.com. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.